So, I'm going to start my talk to give you a little spill about NAD and NAD decline during age and age-related diseases, okay? It is controversial, okay? There are some labs that don't necessarily see NAD decline in aging in all the tissues. The amount of NAD decline varies, but in our lab, in many other labs, I think Eric Virgin here uh, sees, Danica Chain, many others see, there is some degree of NAD decline and there is this functional pellagra that happens during aging, but also happens during several disease states, okay? And there's plenty of preclinical data demonstrating that NAD levels appear to decline and be kind of the downstream effect of, of several injuries. What I'm gonna try to, uh, to uh, sort of present today is a couple of things that we've been investigating. One, how is this NAD decline happening? So what drives the NAD decline? And then ask a really naive question. So if NAD decline is doing aging, is it sufficient to cause any of the phenotypes of aging? And this is something that we don't know yet, okay? And obviously, can you intervene on this NAD decline? So, our sort of um, biggest discovery happened about 20 years ago. It was published in a very low impact journal because nobody believed. And I think that more and more and more, uh, I'm actually excited about things that people don't believe, especially the ones that us, okay, don't believe, okay? That is against our hypothesis. So this was a discovery that was done by Pinar Aksoy in my lab that demonstrated that the number one, the main enzyme that degrades NAD in mammalian tissues wasn't the ones that you would expect, such as PARP1 uh, or, or sirtuins. It was an enzyme called CD38, so cluster of differentiation uh, 38. And as you guys can imagine, this is actually an enzyme that is mostly in immune cells, okay? It's also present in endothelial cells, and there's another really important caveat. Most of your NAD is supposed to be intracellular. This is an ectoenzyme, okay? So there's actually even a topological paradox. But this is the enzyme. Uh, we have been working with this enzyme for a very long time because this enzyme generates second messengers that regulate intracellular calcium. NADP is the one that we discovered when I was a, a PhD student also generates CADPR, but its main function is to destroy NAD. So to generate one molecule of this second messenger, it will use 100 molecules of NAD, okay? And we published uh, now almost 10 years ago uh, a paper in uh, Cell Metabolism demonstrating that during the aging process, this NAD decline was caused at least in part, not completely, by accumulation of CD38 positive cells. So this was published by Juliana Camacho that now has uh, her lab in Brazil. Um, so we follow up with a couple of questions. Obviously, which are the cells that accumulate CD38 during aging, okay? And what we found was what we were expecting, okay? The majority of the cells that accumulate CD38 are immune cells. So as you can see there uh, on the figures, uh, you have young and old animals, and then we stain for CD45 and CD38. And you see those clusters of immune cells that accumulate in the liver, in the fat, and then uh, uh, we, uh, we sort of figure out this is apparently driven by this immune aging process, okay? So this is our hypothesis, so tissue NAD decline was driven mostly by accumulation of those immune cells that are CD38 positive. So how do they get there and what drives them to come to the tissues? So this was a paper that uh, we actually um, had a publication back to back with, uh, with uh, Eric um, on, on nature uh, uh, metabolism, uh, it might be five years now. Um, it certainly was way before that that we started doing this work. But essentially what we actually show 
was that senescent cells were at least in part driving through their SASP, through their circulatory phenotype, the migration and accumulation of those CD38 positive cells. So sort of linking two potential key markers of aging. So in this experiment here, um, you know, the first thing I'm actually showing you guys on the top is that young and old animals, that's fat, okay? And there in red are CD38 positive cells. In yellow are actually the cells that are senescent and they are usually sort of clustered together, okay? Then we ask sort of another naive question, what if we actually inject normal cells or senescent cells in mice does it cause CD38 positive immune cells to migrate? And this is what is on that experiment. So you see in control, we inject the control cells. In the senescent cells, we inject the senescent cells. And you actually see that you see those clusters of immune cells coming to the tissue. So here's again what we demonstrated on, on, on this paper. And actually, again, as I said, Eric validate a lot of this data uh, on his paper that uh, senescent cells through the SASP leads to activation of an M1 type uh, 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 macrophage phenotype, and then uh, those, those cells are CD38 positive. We further validated this uh, by using this mouse model was developed by one of our collaborators, uh, Jim Kirkland, uh, uh, Tamara Taconia, and, uh, and Ian Van Dorsen uh, that are all in the paper. Uh, and what we did was we took mice. There are ink attack. So when you treat those mice with this drug AP, they, they will selectively kill P16 positive cells, okay? And what we show there uh, is that P16 positive cells are wiped out when you treat with AP. CD38 cells, positive cells also go away and then NAD levels are at least partially recovered. Not completely, but partially. So again, this is the hypothesis that we then generated that as the animals were aging, there was accumulation of senescent uh, cells, they secrete SASP, and then they bring CD38 positive immune cells to tissue, and that causes degradation. But we actually show that it wasn't NAD, the main substrate that was being degraded, was actually NMN, one of the precursors of NAD. The next question is unpublished, okay? And you guys are gonna be the first ones to see this data, actually not because I presented this just last week in here to the Alliance on Healthy Aging. So the question is, can NAD decline drive aging, okay? And it is still a question, I don't know the answer, okay? But essentially, what I'm showing you guys there, and if you work with mice, this is a young mouse, and this is an old mouse. This is easy. No big deal. We've all seen this, okay? People that have deficiency of vitamin B3 do not develop, maybe, aging phenotypes, okay? They develop this terrible disease called pellagra. But it might have some features that might have something to do with aging. They have some kind of dementia. They have dermatitis diarrhea, and they die. But I think one of the caveats about pellagra, okay, is that pellagra kills you very fast. In three years, four years, you're dead. So you might not have even time with full-blown pellagra to develop accelerated aging. So we try to model some chronic pellagra in the mouse, okay, and uh, tell you that uh, uh, we were very uh, actually successful. So Andres Benitez is a fellow in my lab that's doing this work. Uh, and this work is seven years old now. Uh, we were finally getting to the point of sending this for publication. Uh, and this was done in collaboration with a group in Utah with Mirella and Ralph uh, uh, Meyer uh, uh, Fika. As you can see there, we have generated a mouse model. I won't tell you the secrets of the mouse model yet, okay? Wait for the publication. But we can titrate NAD levels in a young animal to the same levels in almost every tissue, okay, of an old mice. And now we can ask 
a very simple question. Do they get old or do they look like old animals? Okay? And here's the answer. I hope you guys can appreciate this, that on the far, uh, I guess, left, if you're coming in, you have this animal, and the one on the far, or on the, the sort of the middle there, is his brother. One has normal NAG, one has low NAG. And the one in low NAG, for most people that have seen these mice that are blind, is indistinguishable from an old mice. In fact, looks even older than the 29-month-old mice. Okay? They have the furring of the hair, uh, the, the, the browning of the hair, okay, sorry. Uh, they have kyphosis, they have cataracts, and they have several other features of aging. They increase frailty, and you guys can see what the frailty scores are driven by. They have osteoporosis, and they obviously eventually die, okay? So, do they have molecular features of aging? And in fact, if you look at cellular senescence and inflammation, they do start to show some expression of markers of cellular senescence, okay? And that happens in several tissues. Although it's not as overwhelming as I would have expected by this phenotype, okay? So we then look at the transcriptomic level. And this actually, to me, uh, is somebody that's not usually doing big data, okay? I'm more into the single protein, single enzyme uh, level. There you can see, actually, again, on your far left, the young animals, they cluster very, very, very well together, okay? Then you take the old mice, they sort of cluster a little bit outside of that, and then you have the low NAG animals that start to cluster even further. But you even have old animals that cluster within the low NAG. They are almost the same in terms of, uh, of some uh, transcriptomic analysis. And we found there is actually 159 genes that change exactly the same between low NAG states and old age, okay? So it is possible, okay, and I know this is controversial and this is gonna be kind of crazy, but it is possible that there is a set of changes that happen with age that are actually driven by low NAG states. And maybe it is the set of these 159 genes. Maybe they have nothing to do with aging, maybe they won't change anything, uh, but there is a signature in aging that appears to be NAD dependent. So with that, I'm gonna sort of conclude uh, you know, the talk with you know, obviously the concept. Can we then target this? Uh, and then, as you guys all know, NAD boosting therapy has been going on for a while. Um, we had proposed this many years ago. We have actually done the first, actually, NAD boosting experiments. Um, we actually have shown that the CD38 knockout mice are resistant to high-fat diet induced obesity. This was a long time ago. And then uh, Pharma got actually really excited. This was actually work done by uh, Teresa Barbos in my lab. Work done, uh, also already published in Cell Metabolism by Mariana Tarago, showed that a drug developed by GSK 78C, that is a potent small molecule inhibitor of CD38, can actually ameliorate several features of aging in old mice. Uh, so when we give this, there's increase in health span. They had improved in glucose homeostasis. They run better. Their our cardiac function was better. Um, so they were in better shape. We then asked the question whether they actually would live longer. And so, you know, we did a very expensive experiment, gave this uh, drug for, uh, for the long, long uh, from the uh, life of the animal. And we saw that male mice, when given 78C, actually live it longer. This is also published in Age and Cell. We have then asked in several preclinical studies of different disease states, so models of, uh, of IPF or scleroderma with bleomycin and, and when treated with 78C or when you actually uh, do that on the knockout, they do uh, better, muscle dystrophy, uh, ischemia reperfusion, okay? There is another caveat about this 
uh, enzyme, obviously. So this is an ectoenzyme. So you can approach not only with small molecules, you can also approach with biologics. Okay? So we have developed biologics with a company called Tenio Bio. And if you're from Biopharma, you probably heard about Tenio Bio. Tenio Bio did really well, uh, was acquired uh, just about a year ago for a good amount of, for a good chunk of money. So we then tested these antibodies uh, to see if they actually work in vivo. Because what we wanted to actually demonstrate is not whether the antibody works or not, but it's to test the hypothesis, is the ectoenzyme playing a role in NAD homeostasis in vivo? Okay, and so this is the model we use. Uh, we induce uh, cardiomyopathy with doxorubicin, treated obviously the animals with the antibody and asked the question, what happens? And I'm gonna spare you from the cardiac function. You know, obviously Dr. Rubsing decreased cardiac function, giving the antibody prevented that. Uh, but the thing that to me is remarkable is that although we are inhibiting an ectoenzyme, okay, we could actually ameliorate mitochondrial function on those animals, okay? So this is the Ouroboros tracing of animals with Dr. Rubsing. They're in uh, orange, and when you give the antibody, you bring them back to what they were before. And the other thing is, when you actually give a B68, the antibody, even without any doxorubicin uh, around, you see dramatic changes in metabolic signatures. So there is this metabolic reprogramming induced by inhibiting the ectoenzymatic activity of CD38, okay? Um, there is transcriptional changes, uh, and we saw that IL-17 and TNF were kind of the top ones. So to conclude, uh, and I hope I wasn't too long, um, it's, is it over 20 minutes? I'm good? All right, okay. Well, kick me out. Um, so work done in my lab o over the course of the last 20-something years has established CD38 as one of the key enzymes involved in NAD metabolism, okay? Uh, we have shown that actually the process by which CD38 accumulates in cells in different situations is at least in part linked with senescent cells in the SASP. Uh, and we have, and many others, have now done several preclinical studies that sort of link this NAD pathway dysregulation and, and changes in CD38 expression. Okay? And as I told you, we have uh, approached this with small molecules or also with antibodies. Um, and then we think that one of the problems that NAD boosting may cause is that when you boost NAD, you're boosting every single cell, including senescent cells that actually want NAD, okay? So I think we need to rethink the strategies uh, to alter NAD levels. And I'll give you a couple of caveats about CD38. There are problems with inhibiting CD38. This is a paper that we actually have uh, published in Cell Reports. Uh, Jonathan was the first author of this paper. If you inhibit CD38, there is an increased incidence of infections uh, if you give a bacteria to the mice. So this is one of the caveats. Uh, and then, you know, there's many ideas that sound great uh, when, uh, when you think about it, and when you try, it's a disaster. Um, so I think that there is some no note of caution. And I'll tell you about just this one, okay? I always thought that was a no-brainer that giving an inhibitor CD38 with an NAD booster was gonna be better than each one alone. And as you guys can see over there, it's actually worse. And this is actually the most dramatic of all. You actually have more inflammation when you actually give the CD38 inhibitor plus NR, okay, than on the control animals that were just on a high fat diet. Okay. So there's things that we just don't know yet, okay? So I would uh, be very cautious about proposing anything at this point. I think we need way more studies. Uh,